So hi, hello and welcome again. Um, there's a question concerning a microscope uh, standards and I'd like to explain to you in this video the differences between the so-called DIN 160 millimeter standard and also the so-called infinity objectives. Um, this is a topic that keeps on reappearing every now and then so and I decided to give you a quick overview without going into too many details. Um, most low cost entry level microscopes um, have the so-called 160 millimeter standard and you know that you have a microscope uh, like with that standard because on your microscope objectives, I don't know if you can see this properly, there is a small um, 160 written uh, written on there. Okay, it's a little bit out of focus now. Um, but if you have the 160 written on there, then you know it's uh, basically the DIN 160 millimeter standard. A very common uh, standard in low cost uh, microscopes. Um, also medium range microscopes, but the very high end microscopes from uh, the big microscope manufacturers like uh, Nikon, Olympus, uh, Leica, Zeiss and so on, um, they often use the so-called uh, infinity uh, objectives and I simply want to explain to you a little bit um, what this actually means and what the differences and advantages are, okay, and the disadvantages maybe. Okay, I'm going to start off with uh, the DIN objective and what I've done here is I've drawn a schematic diagram of, uh, of a microscope. The objective lens uh, is uh, supposed to be this one down here. I sim greatly simplified it and the eyepiece is up here and uh, what this objective lens objective does is it uh, this is the specimen down here and uh, what it does is the following it uh, creates an image 150 millimeters um, into the tube of the microscope okay so that is uh, basically the projection plane okay is a uh, from the top, you have to always go from the top uh, um, of the objective, okay? So this is basically where, um, yeah, I've got the plastic cap now, okay? From the top of the objective to the place uh, where it actually creates the image inside the microscope is 150 millimeters. And then you have an additional 10 millimeters uh, where the eyepiece uh, rests. And together, of course, it makes 160 millimeters. And uh, basically what this means is, is that the, the size of the microscope is fixed, okay? So this means uh, you cannot uh, change the distance between the eyepiece and the objective uh, because then it's not going to give you a, a correct image um, and uh, this basically uh, means that uh, you're a little bit limited uh, in two respects concerning the size of the microscope but also if you now put a, a filter in here which is a play um, yeah which is a, a piece of glass so to say then what this hap happens is that it also changes the focus a little bit okay uh, because these light uh, the light beams here they are not parallel but they converge together okay so two disadvantages you cannot put any filters in there without changing the focus um, and the second thing is is that the size of the microscope is fixed and, and limited and for this reason around I don't know 20 years ago or so um, the first or maybe 30 years ago the first microscope start, started to appear that I have uh, the so-called infinity um, objectives and in this case of course I've also, also only drawn one lens but in reality it's a system of, of lenses and what happens is, is that um, you have now uh, this uh, the objective now creates a so-called a parallel light beam okay um, so this means that uh, if you place any filters in here um, then uh, this is not going to change the focus and uh, because this one here the objective now focuses the light into infinity and infinitely far away because the light beams are parallel um, therefore you refer to these objectives as infinity now unfortunately I don't have an infinity objective with me right now um, so I cannot show you um, how it looks like but there is this infinity sign printed on the objective okay but what you need now is, is you need a so-called a tube lens um, and this tube lens is now inside the microscope tube and this one is actually now responsible for focusing the light to a point uh, so that it's projected here and then the eyepiece can pick it up just um, as normally okay um, um, so uh, the disadvantage now is, is with those infinity objectives is, is a little bit is that they're not compatible between different manufacturers and of course they're also not compatible with microscopes that do not have a tube lens okay because your tube lens and the objective they must uh, cooperate together because of any um, um, optical aberrations like chromatic aberrations and so on they have to be corrected in the system otherwise it's going to be um, also be the image quality is going to be reduced okay so um, essentially what I want just want to say is, is that um, um, very high-end microscopes uh, let's put me let me put this away very high-end microscopes um, basically they all the manufacturers they all switched over to infinity simply because it gives the manufacturers more flexibility concerning the microscope design sorry about this uh, to adjust the, the exposure a little bit um, so basically uh, and it is like this that uh, they uh, they basically this way have certain advantages 
um, because if you just look at uh, those high-end microscope manufacturers, I mean, they have an extremely large number of specialized objectives that basically have to be uh, combined and fit together with different microscopes. And this way you simply have the manufacturers simply have more flexibility because you can easily ex exchange the objectives around and you have filters or no filters and does not uh, change the focus around, okay? So it gives uh, microscope manufacturers significantly more flexibility in actually making the microscope modular. Okay, uh, but I would say that uh, probably for entry-level and mid-range microscopes, this is uh, not relevant. And as a matter of fact, you're probably not going to find or you are not going to find uh, a, a sufficiently economically priced microscope with infinity objectives. But as a matter of fact, uh, many of them actually have uh, yeah, the 160 millimeter objective and it's basically standardized. Now, there are certain very low cost microscopes, like for example, I've got one here. The National Opticals or also the Swift uh, S S110 microscope. Um, and if you actually now look at these objectives here, you see that they basically, they are a little bit smaller and uh, the, they basically are not 160 millimeter DIN standards objectives and therefore they are not compatible. Uh, but it appears that they now seem to have defined a different objective standard for making the microscopes more compact, okay? Um, but I uh, just want to say that uh, essentially it's not only the optical distance of the tube lengths which is standardized, but also the, the threading here is also standardized. This means that what I can do is, is I can actually exchange the objectives between microscopes uh, that have uh, the DIN 160 millimeter standard. So what I can could do is I could simply fit this microscope in either this one here or this microscope here because they're basically all the same standard. I can also exchange them. Um, however, there's one uh, thing that you have to be aware of um, is, is that the par focality might not be guaranteed. Uh, so this means the following, while I'm able to, for example, put this mic microscope objective on into one of these microscopes here, it will work, it will fit. Um, it might, might be like this, that if I change the objectives when I rotate them, uh, then it might not be in focus anymore and I have to refocus a little bit, okay? Uh, because par, par focality is not guaranteed. Um, and uh, if you mix objectives of different uh, of different standards uh, of different not different standards of a different series, the standard is the same, but when the series is different, uh, the manufacturers maybe then the par focality might not be guaranteed anymore. But I would say that this is rather a side issue. Um, for you, important to know is, is if you go microscope shopping or if you want to buy second-hand objectives and you have a 160 millimeter objective standard microscope, then you can theoretically or practically you can fit um, other objectives onto it uh, that actually, and it will work, okay? So that is uh, kind of a, a, short, um, a short overview um, of, um, of different uh, microscope standards. Yeah, and that's it pretty much. I wish you all the best. Bye-bye uh, and uh, like and subscribe and also visit the microscopy shop that I have. Bye-bye, all the best. Happy micro hunting. Almost forgot to say that. <laughs>